How are you, child of God? This is the Remnant Sea Bible Study Channel. Welcome. It's that time of the year again, Passover. And uh, the irritation continues. Beloved, I'm sure the Lord every year, I, I'm almost certain, I, I, I just feel his presence and his spirit in this regard that every year he gets a little bit more angry at the modern church and the way that we carry on uh, at this time of the year. It's, it's really sad the things that you see going on in the name of Christianity. And it's, it's just proof positive that the modern church is in an uh, apostate condition. So many of the doctrines they teach, the, the dates that they use uh, to celebrate the holidays, the calendar they use, um, everything about the church has just gone downhill so far and it's hardly recognizable. And I know for a fact our Father's not happy with it. And, I, and of course, there are individuals within each church or body or building that the Lord is pleased with. Um, but as, as a collective whole, the mainstream church is off the rails completely. And this time of the year, is, it, to me, is a special reminder of it. And I, I just get, myself, I get irritated to no end trying to trying to wake up people and, and trying to educate them and, and show them the right dates and the way to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. And I don't see that happening in the church. I, I have given this formula to every pastor I visited and contacted online and uh, who I meet in public. And I, I can tell you without a, without a doubt, that not one of them has said, okay, hold on, wait a minute, I'm going to look into this. And if this old, this old fruitcake old man coming to my church and telling me that I got it all wrong, I'm going to check him out and see what's going on here. And I haven't seen one of them do that. And it's really sad. I mean, why do we got to call this Easter when everybody knows it's not Easter and Easter doesn't even apply to Passover? And why do we celebrate it on different dates every year? I mean, that's it's just wacky. And the rest of the world sees this and just think, think, think we're a bunch of fruitcakes. I mean, this year, Easter, I'm not even going to use the word, I, only in reference. But this year they've got it. Mar what is it? March 29th? ninth. It's 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 a joke. It's a joke. And in some years it's as late as April twenty fourth or twenty fifth. How do you how do you mess up something that bad? The Lord the Lord told us it's on the fourteenth day of Nisan. And. The first day of the year is the first of Nisan, which is the equivalent to our uh, uh, March 19th this year because of the leap year. And almost every year it's March 20th. So you, that's the equivalent of Nisan the first. So every year you, you go from the vernal equinox, you go 14 days, and that evening, that evening is the Passover. So, uh, and, and the Lord, the Lord is actually, is, uh, has been crucified on the same day because he's the Passover cedar. He's the sacrifice. He's the lamb of God. So it, it's happened, another miraculous thing. It happened on the exact same time the death angel passed over the children of Israel. In the exact same time. And this in itself is a miracle that you never hear being mentioned in the church. But Christ was crucified on the cross the exact same time that the lambs were sacrificed uh, on the first Passover. All the way back in Genesis, thousands of years ago. This was all set in motion by God 
long before the foundations of, of the earth. And mankind, the modern church, thinks that we can appoint, and I'll show you this word, appoint. We can appoint our own dates, and we can worship God any way we choose. Forget about the, the immutable facts that are written in God's word and the dates that are set forth in stone. Forget about those. We can just worship the God at any time, and we can celebrate Pastor on any day we choose, just so long as we celebrate. And this could not be further from the truth. All right, and I call this Passover, Easter, Good Friday, um, and a resurrection. It's kind of a conundrum. The whole thing is just a big... It, it's a... Beloved... It's a joke, and the joke is on us. If you go to the Farmer's Almanac, which is online, I'll give you the link. It gives a detailed explanation as to how the dates of Easter are determined. It's quite confusing to an uneducated mind, just as the devil would have it, as he's the author of confusion. The cycles of the moon are not exact, but the cycles of the sun are. And you can guarantee this, beloved, because the sun, this has never changed from the beginning of time. It's like a nuclear clock. It is never changing. It has been the same since the beginning of time. And only our calendars have changed, not the times and the seasons. But people nowadays seek to change the times and the seasons set forward by God as found in Daniel. And this is done collectively by the Christian church. All right. Um, the cycles of the moon are not exact, but the cycles of the sun are, as much of the ecclesial determination on doctrine and the dates of the feast days. They got it wrong. They just do, beloved. I'm sorry. And I'm not no rocket scientist. In ancient times, there were no Saturdays or Sundays on the calendar. So... To all you people that think Saturday or Sunday is the right day to worship God, I mean, come on, seriously? Christ nailed the Sabbath to the cross. We now rest in Him 24-7. We now rest in God 24-7. You rest while you work. You rest while you play. You rest while you worship. Everything you do requires you in the new covenant to rest in Christ. And if you're not resting in Christ, you're, you're, you're not resting. At the time of the first Passover, the calendar that was used was purely solar and is based on a sundial. And try to use the sundial at night, beloved. It's, it's really so rudimentary on how to figure this out. You can, I can go right now and put a sundial in my backyard and, and, and do it it's better to do it on the first day of the vernal equinox. Figure out where the shadows are at and then set your clock from there, uh, you know, on, on the 12-hour scale. And you can determine when the vernal and the autumnal equinox comes around every year. And then you could just count the days after that. It's not that, not that difficult. All right, and... Um, Okay, they never change, uh, okay, and I want to drive that point home. The times and the seasons do not change. It's the calendars that change, beloved, and, and you got to keep your mind focused on that. And why can't the modern church get this right? And the, the answer to me is, is alarming, and it's very telling about the modern church. Um, they just don't really think it's that important. Like I said, they think they can just pick a day and, and worship it on that day and call it good. And in my mind, beloved, it's just as easy to get this wrong as it is to, to get it right. And the general attitude of the church is that of compromise and comfort and not in the spirit of truth, which that's the only way to please God is to worship Him in spirit and truth. And if you're not doing that and giving it your all and your due diligence and looking past all the nonsense, then you're, you just don't care enough. I'm sorry. The date of Passover is given in the Word of God many times, also the way in which Christians should gauge time as well. Prophecies given to the children of God are given in days, and prophecies given in regards to Satan are given in nights or moons. 
That's not to say that the time isn't measured in months, beloved, but that's just a general rule of thumb And when you're being given prophecies or things that concern the future. Lunatic is a derivative of the word lunar, which is, you know, the moon. And anybody who works at a hospital in healthcare will tell you that when the moon comes out, it's a full moon, all the crazies come out, beloved. And this is a fact. It's just really weird that the effect that the moon has, it actually pulls the oceans up like five feet when it's full. The gravitational pull of the moon has an effect on the human psyche for some reason. The electronic, uh, you know, impulses that, go, that, that affect our body, our, we're, we are uh, beings that have electricity flowing through our bodies. And a full moon does affect us. And that's where we get the word lunatic from. Crazy. And the church gauges their time on the moon. I mean, that if that isn't insane, I don't know what is. How ironic the modern church det determines the date of one of the most important holidays based on the cycles of the moon, completely contrary to God's word. And it is. It's totally contrary. And I'll show you the scriptures. Um... Is it any wonder because of this that the church is in such a state of apostasy and just complete freefall? It is. It's losing membership every day. And I'll show you, I'll, I'll put this link in the description box uh, to the Farmer's Almanac. And, now, and they give a great explanation of how they determine Easter. All right? Now, these are the verses that tell us that we are to gauge our times and seasons by the light and the cycles of the sun and not the moon. You got John 12, 36. You got Ephesians 5, 8. And I'll let you read these for the sake of time. 1 Thessalonians 5, 5. You're all children of the light and the children of the day. We're not of the night or the moon, nor of darkness. And you don't you don't determine the feast or the holy days on the moon. Okay? <laughs> Sorry, it's, it just doesn't work. It's against God's word. Got to realize that. The real issue is how does God see this? First of all, the modern church does a bait and switch with Passover and Easter. They claim there are three days and, and three nights between Friday and Sunday, calling it Good Friday and, and Good Friday. Good Friday being the crucifixion and Sunday the resurrection. It's kind of backwards. And they replaced Christ with the Easter bunny and the, and the same with Christmas as Santa Claus and a bunch of fairy tales, a rapture and, you know, people floating around in the sky and rabbits running around laying eggs. The whole thing is a mockery of God's word. It's it absolutely astounding how much of this has creeped into the modern church and beloved, this is a bad testimony for Christianity because the rest of the world looking at us thinking we're a bunch of fruitcakes. It's just absolutely an abomination to me. And this is 2 Chronicles 13, 8 tells us that this is the, these are the, this is the golden calves of our time. Using the Gregorian calendar for a timepiece for our holy days. And the Easter Bunny and all the, the false gods that we've allowed to creep into the church. All right, these are the golden calves of our time. Make no mistake. Christ was the Passover lamb and he, and he was crucified on Easter on the 14th or April 3rd. But this year, beloved, it's actually April 2nd. This is an older uh, uh, essay that I wrote. And it's not chosen by man, but by God. He was re resurrected three days later on, on Nisan um, the 17th or April 6th. Good enough is not good enough for God. The dates are set in stone, not to be tampered with. Easter is not Passover, and Passover is not Easter. Why not just call it by its rightful name, which is Passover, and totally eliminate the word Easter out of your vocabulary? Just completely get rid of it forever and ever and ever. The Passover was held right before the crucifixion, which was on the same day, the 14th of Nisan. Jesus was a Passover cedar. 
The resurrection was three days later. I'm repeating a lot of this, beloved, because this, the church doesn't get this. Calling the crucifixion Good Friday is an oxymoron. Passover has nothing to do with Easter and Good Friday, and they're pretty purely traditions of men. And traditions of men make void the Word of God. Any person in the right mind knows there's not three days between Friday and Sunday. And that to me is so, it, it just irks me. It absolutely irks me. And I see these preachers trying to explain this. And I just, I, I, I can't stand to look at them. I, I love them, but I cannot stand to look at them or listen to it. To the world, all this makes no sense. And they scoff at Christians who believe rabbits lay eggs. And that there's three days between Friday and Sunday. Not to mention the fact that the holiday is on a different date every year. Rabbits represent fertility and multiplication and are often the brunt of jokes. Such as, you have two, two rabbits in a cage uh, one week and then three weeks later you got 50 of them, okay? And then when you really look at this on, on a fundamental level, all of this is symbolism. And it plays into the hands of the goddess of fertility, uh, Ashtaroth, 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 one of the first names of Ishtar, where the etymology of the word comes from. It's all about fertility and, 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 and quick like a bunny and the whole, it's all about sexual rights. It's a perversion. It's perverting one of the high holy days of the year. And the egg. Same thing with it. It's symbolic of the same meaning. Fertility and increase, just like the goddess of Ishtar. And I'll show you the word in the Hebrew. To add an insult to injury, they send their kids out on Easter egg hunts. And what on earth does any of this have to do with Passover? Nothing. I've heard people try to explain the egg, the egg as a, the, the trinity. And I, I, just, I almost want to just beat my head on a wall. I, I can hardly... Imagine how, I want, I'm not going to say the word, beloved, okay? It just, it, it irks me. Christ was the Passover lamb, so why would you call it Easter? And, and the, the church is so confused. You can't just pull a rabbit out of the hat and call a date anything you want or celebrate it on any time of the year want, you want. And God punished the children of Israel for this, beloved. This prescribed time of day is set in stone. It's immutable according to God. Easter ain't got nothing to do with Passover. Get it out of your vocabulary forever. All right, and we got the, we got the mention of the, the uh, Passover in Exodus 12, 27. It's mentioned before this, beloved. This is just one of the, one of the uh, examples of it. But it's on the 14th day of the first month that evening is the Lord's Passover, and it's mission, mentioned many, many, many times in God's Word, and there's no excuse not to know when this date is. And the 14th of Nisan is the first day of spring, and the first day of the, of the Hebrew ancient Hebrew solar calendar, and it began on the vernal equinox. And it's the equivalent to our March 19th, the, the, uh, March 20th, most years, but the 19th this year. Two weeks or 14 days from then is the Passover, which is April 3rd or April 2nd this year. And the best way to look at the meaning the, or the etymology of a word is to look at the actions or deeds associated with it. Uh, and, and all the earlier versions of the word Easter are associated with the worship of false gods, no matter what you call it. I don't care how you determine how, how the etymology of the word was formed. You can claim it, it, it was, uh, you know, derived from a different etymology or had a different birth, but all you got to do is look at the deeds associated with it. And they're doing the same thing today as they did back then. And it's all symbolism. And it, it means a lot to God. You may not be thinking about this in your own mind, but you're still imitating what the heathen did, and it was an abomination to God, and it irritates him to no end. Why would you want to irritate God? 
What is sad is the modern church imitates all the deeds done by the heathen, heathen of old who participated in grove worship and don't realize the word Easter represents grove worship and sexual perversion. The word Easter is associated with the worship of false gods and should never be used be, uh, during Passover. And there you have all the words. Ashtaroth, Ashtoreth, Easter, and e Easter. First used in Genesis 14.5. Ashtaroth, the Hebrew word 6252. Okay, it's a Phoenician goddess of love and increase, fertility, however you want to use it. And they worshipped her. All right? And, and that's they and, and these children would go running around in the running around in the in the uh, groves and they were having orgies beloved I don't know how else to explain it and if you're not made green groves green trees high hills all symbolic of sexual perversion if you're not making the connection to idolatry you're missing the point no matter what the etymology of the word or the actions, you're missing the point if you don't make the connection. These traditions have creeped into the church and they should never be there. The rabbit, eggs, baskets, the coloring of eggs, and sunrise services all represent one form or another of idolatry and taken in by the modern church. All are symbols of fertility and grove worship on every high hill and under every green tree. And I'll show you all the places these, this terminology is used. And beloved, it's all about the worship of false gods and all of the, these idols that these people were worshiping. And this is, has all about, has all to do with where the word Easter comes from. Ashtaroth, the goddess of fertility, a false god. And this has creeped into the church. It's all the things that the modern uh, church does on Easter that connects it to grove worship. The queen of heaven, the goddess of fertility, increase is basically found in the word Easter. Or Easter. They get the times and the seasons wrong, and they get the date wrong, they call it the wrong name, and this is a high holy day of Christianity. When the children participate in Easter egg hunts, they're imitating ancient grove worship which is nothing more than a sexual orgy held in the groves. And it doesn't matter what you're thinking in your mind, beloved. I guess it does. The Lord knows your heart, okay? But this is an absolute irritation to him because you're imitating what they did. You may not be thinking about it, but still you're imitating what they did. So why don't you just stop it? Please, stop it. And, okay, um... You're imitating ancient grove worship, which is nothing more than the sexual orgy held in, in the groves, to repeat that. In Old Testament times, the tradition was to run around in the grove of trees naked early in the morning after worshiping the sun. Now, does uh, sunrise service uh, ring a bell to you? Next, they had sex with anything that moved in, beloved, including children. All right, the rabbit. The eggs, the name Easter, all point to the worship of the god of fertility, Ashtaroth. This is the true etymology of the word Easter. Like it, like it or not, words have meanings, beloved. When you combine the etymology of the word Easter and connect it with the actions and practices done by the modern church on the Passover, reflect back on what they did long ago and look today. It's still being practiced in the church today, and it is an abomination, beloved. Make no mistake about it. And then you got the word grove. It's Ashereth. It sounds like a lot like Ashtaroth. A Phoenician goddess, okay? The same thing. It's a false god. Astarte, okay? And these people are worshiping this false god, the golden calf of our day. Now, in talking to all these pastors, that, all these churches I've been to and talked to online and, and just in, in everyday life, I hear the excuse all the time, well, we're not thinking about any of this. We're not thinking about the goddess of fertility. We're, we're celebrating the resurrection and, and Passover and, and the, the crucifixion. 
In beloved, that may be so, and I love my brethren, but the fact still remains. You are imitating what they did in their worshiping and false gods. So why don't you just stop it right now? Don't do it again. Quit calling this day Easter. Quit celebrating on the wrong day. And this is what Yahweh thinks about his holy days being celebrated on the wrong date and being called by the wrong name. You can't just appoint, and that word is very important, your own times and seasons and expect the, the Lord to accept your worship. All right? He's not going to. And we are in this time right now, your new moons and your appointed feast, appointed, you appointed them, not God. My soul hateth, okay? They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. The Lord is tired of this, beloved. And, and here are the other examples. I'm not going to read them all for the sake of time. You got Jeremiah 44.4, Amos 5.21. The Lord hates it. I'm telling you, the Lord hates it. And his anger is kindled, and it gets worse and worse every year, beloved. I can feel it. Never use the moon for a time piece, which is exactly what the modern church does. And this is what ticks God off, is you think you can just appoint your own feast days in the times and seasons to worship God. And it's not you're up to you, it's up to God. He's already appointed them. It's not up to you to reappoint them. And you got to stop it. You got to get this right. And another thing I hear is the Passover is a Jewish holiday only. And come on, people. Christ died for everybody. And he is the Passover lamb. Who else you get, Who else you is? did he die for? It, it's not an exclusive club. It is if you're a believer. All right? But the, what about the, the, the concept of the grafted seed? This is for everybody, beloved. This is a bunch of nonsense. Okay, now if you look at Exodus 12, 27, 23, and all the examples of this, this is the Lord's Passover. It ain't yours, it ain't mine, it ain't anybody's. This is the Lord's. This is his appointed time. This is when he chose to do it. This is who he chose to be the sacrifice in the Passover lamb. It's written. It's set in stone. You can't change it. All right, and Ezekiel 8, 16, this is in regards to, and their faces turn toward the east, and they worship the sun toward the east. And this is what they do when they do these sunrise services. They're imitating the worship of the sun. And everything they do in the Easter tradition is the same thing they did back when they worshiped the goddess of fertility, it's the same thing. You're imitating all of it, and it's an abomination. All right? Stop it. And, and beloved, here's another fact. Why would the translators translate Pascha to Passover 28 times, and then in Acts 12 translate it to Easter? And I believe it was intentional. I believe this got the devil written all over it. And he got all the instances of grove written in the Bible, and it's associated with worshiping gods, false gods, Balaam, uh, I mean, every kind of false god you can think of, and people running around uh, in orgies and just complete, absolute an abomination to God and participating in this stuff. And then now the modern church has brought this in on the high holy day of Christianity. It's got to just completely irritate our Lord to no end. And I, I have a feeling... I feel it in my spirit. There's going to come a day when the Lord is going to pour out his anger on this. And it may be on the very same day that we do this false worship of him. And I could be wrong, but I, I can just feel his anger kindling. Okay, look at all these times here that, that, these, that this is mentioned. So that's uh, come to the end of this lecture, beloved. And every Every year this comes around and I can feel the Lord getting a little bit more angry. And we, we got to stop this, beloved. We got to get this right. We got to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. And I try my best to do this, beloved. 
So anyway, that's the end of this lecture, and I love you so much, and I do this for you, and we will see you on the next lecture.